Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be real quick. I'm going to talk to you guys about a fragrance profile and composition I don't see a lot of and I really want to see more of. So I'm going to get into that a little bit. So it's going to be kind of a little chit chat video like why aren't there more fragrances like this out there and am I the only weirdo that wants them? So let's go. is savory fragrances you guys i want more of them you have your fresh fragrances you have your rose fragrances your floral fragrances your bouquets you know your barbershop fragrances your gourmand your earthy your dry your grassy your green your sheeper i know i said that wrong i'm sorry your oriental you have such a variety of fragrances but one kind of little avenue i want people to explore more of is savory fragrances. I'm talking about fragrances with earthy umami elements that maybe have some really nice herbal aspects to them, or maybe some sweet and gourmand elements to them that really bring out the food element. So this is kind of a little bit of like a gourmand fragrance, but not like a classic gourmand. Something a little bit more conceptual, something a little bit more harder to wear, but nonetheless, something really beautiful and an entire fragrance area that I think needs to be explored more. And kind of what made me think about this was I was thinking about ways to really develop your nose. Like when I was in culinary school, if you guys don't know, I went to culinary school for a little bit. One of the things that my chefs um, were teaching us was how to really um, expand your palate. Sometimes you have to push yourself in uncomfortable directions to really develop your palate. And one of the, and this is going to be crazy, one of the examples they used was durian. When it came to durian, if you're unfamiliar with what it is, it is a notorious fruit that is very, very popular in Asian cuisines and Asian foods. But when it comes to the West, we are completely ignorant of it. Our palates are completely ignorant of it. And it's a very difficult fruit, uh, fruit for people who are unfamiliar of it to really kind of wrap their head around. <laughs> Uh, some people absolutely love it, some people can't stand it. It's very stinky, but then kind of like stinky cheese. Like it's still stinky in a kind of like, like edible way. Like not in a rancid gross way, but in a enticing way. Like what's your appetite, but you're like unsure of why you're so hungry. She was explaining that the reason why durian was a great example was because it was so widely loved and that when it came down to it, palettes were so different and as a chef, you really wanted to expand your palate so that way you could create better dishes. You could understand the components of dishes better, understand where other people came from so that way you could satisfy more palates and more needs. And so eating durian is not one of my favorite things, but it always kind of stuck with me along, along the same ways when it came down with other things, when it came down to different music or when it came down to different smells. And what I love the idea of is really pushing your nose in different directions is that's when I started to really love and search for conceptual fragrances. Fragrances that were harder to wear, fragrances that were in some cases unwearable but still really unique and successful perfumes. The best example I can come to this is Secretions Magnifique. I did a first impression of this over a year ago. One of my subscribers sent me a sample. It was so nice of them. And it was one of the grossest fragrances I've ever smelled, but it was still a very successful fragrance. There was something about it that really triggered a response in you, but at the same time, you couldn't stop smelling it even though it was really gross. And you could understand where some people might really enjoy it, but at the same time, it's not something that you were comfortable or familiar with. And I feel like a lot of times when it comes down to fragrance compositions, people stink to the uh, stink. <laughs> That's a perfect word. Um, stick to their comfort zones. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with knowing what you like. There's nothing wrong with wanting to smell presentable and attractive and getting compliments and feeling proud of what you're wearing and not scaring people away. But I found with me, um, what I really wanted was to kind of grow my palate and grow my nose palate, you know, and get experience so that way when I try different things, I could really gain an appreciation for them. It doesn't mean that everyone has to go this way. This is just how I went about it. Obviously, you do not need to go out there and smell a whole bunch of stinky things to appreciate that a good fragrance smells good. But I really started to want to search out conceptual fragrances and harder to wear fragrances and really appreciate the time and artistry that went behind these fragrances to create them. 
And one of those fragrances that I think was so successful in that regard was from House of Matriarch, and it was Forbidden. And this is a fragrance that is earthy and damp and vegetal, and it's got mushrooms, and it's got a very overripe indolic tuberose. There are so many different things going on in this fragrance, and for some reason it worked. And I loved that. And another fragrance to me that wasn't so much savory but had a lot of different things going for it which didn't seem like it would be easy to wear but it still worked and was still interesting and I enjoyed was Sacred Water from The Harmonist. <laughs> now these are all very conceptual um, fragrances but are still very wearable. I think Bat is from a zoologist is another fantastic example and some offerings from Etat Le Bret d'Orange and also from Imaginary, Offer, uh, Imaginary Authors are other fantastic examples of more contemporary conceptual niche houses that push the boundaries. And one of those boundaries I want these people to push is savory fragrances. I really want that earthy, umami, mushroomy, truffle um, kind of savoriness to fragrances. I've seen people do it and then they have chocolate and as much as I love that, I kind of don't want the safety net of what a chocolate or what a vanilla would do. I want them to push the boundaries and I feel like that's a whole genre of fragrances that has yet to be completely um, explored that could be really awesome. <laughs> It wouldn't be for everybody, it would definitely not be for the faint of heart, but I think the idea of savory gourmand fragrances could be something really awesome and spectacular, and it was something I would love to see tackled. I don't know the right person to tackle this, these types of fragrances, and I maybe I'm ignoring or completely missing a whole genre or a whole house or a whole variety of fragrances that aren't that. And you're like, no, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of them. Here they are. Here's the list. So at searching, but I don't see it. I want it. I want that kind of meaty umami savoriness, like the mushrooms and the truffles and the saltiness and the earth and the damp. I don't know. I want that. I like smelling like food. It's one of the ways I like smelling like. I like smelling like desserts, but I wouldn't mind smelling like the main course too. I don't know. So that is something I kind of like have been thinking about today. I was like, what am I going to film today? I'm like, it's going to be a weird video today, guys. We're going to talk about smelling like roast beef because that's what I want to smell like. I know it's so weird, guys, but I would love to see like fragrance house just push a little bit more boundaries and kind of go off the deep end a little bit more because whenever they do it, I get really excited. And I open my wallet and my credit, credit card overfloweth into their bank accounts. But I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Is this something you think would be really kind of cool? Or you think I'm kind of crazy and stupid? Um, are there fragrances like this out there that I'm completely ignoring or ignorant to? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, I figured I'd just kind of sit down and chat with you guys because I really, I'm also very hungry right now, but um, I don't know if that has anything to do with this video, but ultimately it was something I'm thinking about and one of the genres of fragrances I would love to see explored more. It's more conceptual, savory type gourmand fragrances and less of the sweet side. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like videos like this, I don't know why you would, but if you like videos like this, remember to give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue doing videos like this. And also don't forget to subscribe because it's free. I'm <laughs> free, obviously. <laughs> and I put out new videos every Monday through Friday and sometimes on the weekends as well. So I'll always have something for you to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time. Bye.